Okay, let's kick off with uh, pretty much where we left off last week. So we talked about some US financials last time. There were a couple more. This week, Bank of America was in there. But as I already said, there was nothing really that we haven't already talked about. And so I, I couldn't work out how to say something interesting about it. So I didn't. Um, I didn't work out. I didn't, sorry, let that stop me uh, with Charles Schwab, though. I don't have a massive amount interesting to say about this. But uh, that stock went up this week quite a bit. I think it moved on its earnings and I think pushed upwards. Revenue came in 9% higher. Earnings per share came in 38% higher. Five. Uh, $5.12 billion in revenue. I've got written 83 cents, although I've crossed out several numbers at the start of that. Something ended in three, probably 83 uh, cents per share in earnings. Steve, this is one of yours. The company was kind of just, uh, well, there'd been a lot of negativity around Schwab recently because around sort of SVB stuff and deposits leaving and that kind of thing. And Schwab needs deposits to make money. That's pretty much its only way of of making money. And with interesting rates on offer from things like money market funds and well, generally elsewhere, consumers are, are shopping around a little bit. We see that with ourselves. Um, so Schwab needs to try and find a way to hang on to deposits or at least make sure it is hanging on to deposits that are kind of loose and not invested. Um, it had been falling beforehand, but anything interesting there for you, Steve? Uh, so, yeah, this is one that I bought because I thought of all of the banks, this was the most overblown uh, in terms of what people thought was... Um, uh, you know, they thought this was going to follow suit the the, the, the people like Signature and uh, SVB, and, and I couldn't see that. To be honest, I thought Swab was a lot uh, smarter ran than that. So I saw deposits down uh, about eleven percent, uh, which is about what I expected. Um, pretty much reassuring stuff from the CEO who said that, uh, and I quote Steve. I would certainly hope that by this time, speculation that we would find ourselves in a position where we would be forced to sell securities that have temporary paper losses has been put to bed. And that's essentially what I what I saw in this report. So this was a, a company doing absolutely fine. Um, I also picked up a, a little quote for you, Steve, by um, Michael Wong. He's director of equity at um, Morningstar. And he said... Schwab's first quarter earnings should put much or most of the concerns about the company to rest. And that was it for me. If you had any nagging doubt about where Schwab was and uh, how it was operating, these earnings just came out and said, look, we've lost a little bit of deposits. But in terms of what you thought we'd done, nowhere near. I think he thinks it should uh, put to bed these concerns. I don't think he thinks it will. I was reading his report on uh, Schwab recently, and what they're kind of foreseeing is uh, a bit more deposit coming out over the course of maybe this year, but certainly the next quarter before things start to kind of turn upwards again. And that got me thinking of you and your investment in them. I mean, that's what you'd like from a, an investment, isn't it? Something that will you can buy it at a, a price that you like the look of, let's say a reasonable price for the time being. Um, but, you know, maybe you judge it rightly, maybe you don't. But you find a price you're happy with, start buying it, goes down, you get a chance to load it up nicely. And then just as you've built yourself a nice position, up we go and to the right. Yeah, and that's it, really. Essentially, I mean, I know once this Fed, uh, one the the Fed liquidity package came out, um, I, I did some sort of like napkin math on uh, Schwab's deposits, and I realised that they could pay out about ninety two percent of their customers if every single you know if ninety two percent of their customers came to their door, knocked, and withdrew all of their money. Schwab could still pay it out without any issue, and then I had to sort of weigh up in my head how realistic that was going to be. Uh, so to only see what was essentially 11% uh, makes me feel like that was a little bit overblown. It's not a massively cheap stock though, Steve, in terms of a bank stock. Schwab still charges a little bit of a premium uh, to, to some of the bank stocks. Um, but it's, it, it got significantly cheaper over this period of time, it, enough so that I, I can buy it. And the good thing about it is it's it's growing at a decent rate still and the profit um, the bottom line is still pretty decent as well uh one of the things that people seem to have forgotten about um in terms of Schwab is that they're not just banging the money in treasuries and using that to generate the vast majority of their income they, they do have a loaning arm as well and they're loaning out at higher rates which is generating higher profits for them which is which is what we saw in this this is just standard bank procedure for me steve i, I never got the fuss no, you you keep calling Schwab a bank, and you're right to, and I seem to never really think of it like that in my head. I always think of it like a kind of trading 212 thing. 
Uh, but that's basically what it does. It does bank things. It takes in deposits and makes loans and keeps the difference or, or makes investments and keeps the difference, I guess, loans being a type of, of them. I think because it kind of came from being a kind of brokerage uh, firm, I sort of think of it as a brokerage firm, but a really distinctive one. And maybe I'd do better to think of it as a kind of bank with a nice uh, retail brokerage arm attached to it. Quite a big retail brokerage arm, right? And one that, um, yeah, one that uh, a lot of other banks would do would like to have, I guess. Mm. Yeah, that's, okay. that's that was essentially what I thought of it. Steve. I actually think it's gone from being a serial acquirer to something that somebody might fancy uh, trying to hand at the uh, you know of getting a hold of, especially while regulation is a little bit a little bit more lax, just because of you know the financial situation. I wonder if any of these really really big banks think maybe we could take a big swing at Schwab here and see if we can get it through. <laughs> 